Hello, my name's Geraldine Edgar and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to look at today is a relatively humdrum car, quite a cheap car, but it's got what I think is an excellent rear spoiler design for a hatchback. Let's take a look. So first of all, on a hatchback, what do you want the rear spoiler to be doing? Well, you want it to reduce drag in two ways. The first, by providing clean separation. The air just flows off the edge rather than wrapping around onto the rear surface. And you want it to reduce drag by giving a smaller wake and a smaller area of the car exposed to that wake. Furthermore, you also want it to reduce lift. And you do that by causing it to increase pressures on the rearmost part of the roof. All right, there's our shopping list. Now what about a car that I think probably achieves those very well? Now, that car is a 2012 onwards Mitsubishi Mirage. Quite, as I say, a cheap car, a shopping basket. But the more I've been looking at it, the more I've been impressed by its aerodynamics, especially at the back. And today, when I looked up what its drag coefficient is, it's as low as 0.27, which is really very, very good for a hatchback-shaped car, let alone one introduced eight years ago. Now, I want to concentrate today on the rear spoiler, but just looking at the back of the car here, you can see excellent separation line there and on the lights. And you can see the spoiler also provides a good side separation up there. So it's not just the spoiler alone that's responsible for its good drag. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of different things, but the spoiler, I'm sure, will be working very, very effectively. Now, I must add, I've done no testing on the Mirage, and I don't have any access to technical papers on the Mirage. So what I'm about to say is really characterized as my educated guess. Okay, I don't want to pretend this is a result of a whole lot of testing as I do on lots of other cars. So firstly, reducing drag by providing clean separation. Well, the spoiler achieves that by having that sharp trailing edge or relatively sharp trailing edge. Obviously, it has to still have a radius, so it's not to be dangerous, but the air is not going to be able to wrap around that corner and it's going to flow cleanly off, which means you don't get a little suction peak across the back of the car, which increases drag. Now, secondly, it needs to reduce drag by giving a smaller wake area, and it achieves it by its downwards inclination. I came across one in a car park the other day and whipped out my phone and measured its angle. It was 13 degrees below horizontal. That's very much in the ballpark of what the research indicates and what my measurements indicate is, is good for this type of spoiler design. I don't want to say it has to be 12 degrees or it has to be 13 because everyone will take that as gospel and there is going to be a range of angles. But 13 degrees is certainly well within that recognized uh, angle, uh, ballpark angle. Okay, now, how does it reduce the size of the wake? Well, look, it's angling that air downwards, and that angled air downwards, compare that as if it angled it upwards, where obviously the wake would get bigger and bigger. Here, it's angling the air downwards, which reduces the size of the wake. The wake is a low pressure area. Low pressures means they're pulling on the panels. So here, it reduces the area that's pulling backwards on the car through those low pressures. Now, what about increasing uh, pressures on the back of the roof in order to reduce lift. Now this is the one I came across in the car park and you know I'm just in trance when I come across cars in car park and look at, at their aerodynamic characteristics. There's a few things here. We've got the downwards angle there, 13 degrees as I said earlier, but we've also got this little lip on the back of the spoiler. Now that makes that previous slide showing the airflow just flowing straight down a little deceptive. But this lip never increases the size of the weight because it's well below the trailing edge of the roof. In other words, the air is flowing downwards and then it's just changed a little bit in direction at the end of the spoiler. Now, when you change the airflow direction in that way, you increase, measurably increase the pressures that are acting downwards on the roof ahead of that. And that would be reducing lift. And to improve the effectiveness of this type of little spoiler on the back of the bigger spoiler, notice how they actually have used side fins. And that stops the air spilling off the sides. And my measurements on other cars show that side fins really do improve how well a spoiler of this type works in reducing lift. The next time, if they sell this car in your country, you see one of these Mirages, have a really, really good look at it. 
and have a look at what they've done on that rear spoiler design because I think it is really outstanding. And here you can see all those things put together. You can see the little side fins. These bumps here are just to cover the hinges, but the side fins are definitely performing an aerodynamic function. You can see the downwards inclination overall of the spoiler and how it's a continuation of the roof angle. And then you can also see how the air is directed a little bit more upwards than it otherwise would be to increase these pressures ahead of it on the rear part of the roof. A really good car to look at closely, I think, especially if you have a hatchback and you're thinking of most effective design of rear spoiler. The books are Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car and Car Aerodynamic Testing for Road and Track. For example, this book here shows you how you can directly measure an increase in pressure on the roof caused by that type of spoiler to reduce lift. Thank you.